So when we talk about network diagrams, there's two types that we can actually use. There's PDM, which we've been using up until now, and the one that we will introduce in this video is called CPM. So by now you're familiar with the PDM network diagram, uh, and the thing to note about this is this is activity on node. So when we draw a PDM network diagram, it looks something like this, where our activities are on the nodes, and the nodes are connected by arrows. And the arrows actually have no duration or anything like that. They're sort of like a point in time. Like this arrow is like the point in time between A finishing and B starting, right? It has no time. It just, it just connects them with the logic. Whereas with CPM, this is an activity on arrow. So instead of the activity being on the node, it's almost going to be sort of like an inverse of this, and we will have the activities on the arrows, and the nodes will represent spaces and our points in time. So it'll look like this, where we have to now put our activities on the arrows. So we would have activity A leading into activity B, which leads into activity C. And then what we do is we'll actually number the nodes after we've completed the network diagram, and we'll generally go from left to right, so we would have one, two, three, four. Uh, obviously in a more complicated network diagram, we can't just generally go from left to right because there'll be you know some ups and downs. But what the trick is, is we use these numbers as what's called like an IJ number, where A's IJ number would be one, two, B's IJ number would be two, three, and C's IJ number would be three, four. So it's just what, it's com what node it's coming from and what node it's leading to. We can use that as a number to identify the activity as an alternative to using its actual name. And one of the rules is that just I has to be less than J. So you can't have like a three leading into a two or something like that, just when you're numbering it. So you'll always want to number these after you've drawn in a way that uh, it makes it work. So something to notice about this is, yeah, our activities now for the CPM are on the arrows instead of being on the nodes. And in this case, the nodes sort of represent a point in time. For example, if, for the, if this was the whole project, then this number one node here would just be the beginning of the project or uh, the point in time where activity A starts. And then activity A goes until it's done. And then point two here would be the point in time where activity A is done and B starts. But one of the conventions of a CPM network diagram is that each activity has to have its own unique IJ number. So what happens if we have a PDM diagram that looks like this? Well, we can analyze it and we can look then see, well, we're going to have to have start out with an arrow for activity A. And then we would have some point in time between A finishing and B starting. And that would actually be the same point in time uh, where A finishes and C starts, right? Because A only finishes at one point in time. And then we need another point in time where B finishes and D starts and then C finishes and D starts. So would we be able to do something like this? So the question is, is this okay? Well, this violates a rule of each activity having its own unique IJ number because B its IJ number would be 2, 3, and C's IJ number would be 2, 3. So the way that we do this is we introduce the use of a, another node, but mostly the use of a dummy variable. So what we'll do is we'll erase B and it'll look like this. Okay, so what the heck's going on here? We have activity A on an arrow between nodes 1 and 2. That's, that's great. We have this point in time. Let's look at it this way. We have this point in time 2. That's where A is done, okay? So that it kind of represents this point in time right here, right? Where A is done and B and C can start. So we're looking at, well, C, activity C goes from the point in time where A finishes to the point in time where D starts. A finishes, D starts. That makes sense right there. So let's follow B here. B starts at this point in time. Uh, this was number two. That's the point in time where A ends. And it's going to this other node, node number three, which represents the point in time where B is done. Now there's this dashed line coming down to node four, and notice this is a dashed line and there's no letter here. So any solid line in a CPM network diagram has to have an activity because that's what it is. The activities are on the arrows. But a dashed line is just a dummy activity or a dummy arrow. It's not an actual activity and it doesn't represent any time. It just shows you the predecessor logic that activity B must finish before D can start. But the whole point of this is just to prevent two separate activities from having the same IJ number. Uh, now this is the point in time where B and C as we found, are both done because of the logic here, and also the point where D is able to start. And so like when we compare it to our PDM network diagram, it still checks out. 
Uh, and then there's some point in time here between D finishing and E starting. So then once D is done, we're hanging out here at node 5. This is the point in time where D is done and E can start. And then sure enough, we get E. And then once E is done, we have this last node, uh, node number 6, uh, is when activity E is done and also just happens to be the end of the project. So when we're drawing CPM network diagrams, one of the things, one of the other rules that we have to follow is we want to minimize the use of dummies. You'll see in harder, more complex examples that uh, you might draw your CPM network diagram, you'll have all sorts of dummies and you'll look at it for a while and say, hey, wait a second, like I can reduce that, uh, I, can, I can draw this a little bit better. So one of the goals is just to use the least amount of dummies possible and also to minimize the number of unnecessary crossovers. Like if this is a bigger network diagram, there'll be arrows going everywhere and just to, uh, for whoever's using it, you want to have the least amount of crossovers. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is for CPM network diagrams, the diagram has to start with one node and end with one node. It's just this convention that's used. So what I would like to show you is what if we had a CPM diagram that looks like this, where this would be, say, activity A, B, and C, and these would be the first three activities of some project that would go off into other activities. And then we could label our nodes. We could maybe do one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice I could have said one, two, three, four, five, six. As long as the i, j numbers of every single activity in, in the project uh, where i is less than j, as long as that checks out, then it's okay. It doesn't actually matter how you number them. As long as the i, j numbers are i is less than j. Anyways, the question is, could we have a network, a CPM network diagram that starts like this? Well, no, we have to start on one single node. So the correct way to actually redraw this would be just like this. Where this arrow is activity A, then B, then C, then this would be one, two, three, four. And similarly, if this was like the end of the project, we can't finish with three separate nodes because there is only the point in time that represents the end of the project is a single point in time. It's not three different points in time. So then we would have these all converge into one node, uh, like the opposite of this, basically. So moral of the story is you would not be able to draw something like this, starting with three or ending with three if this is the beginning or the end of the project.